earth signs taurus virgo and capricorn welcome in welcome in welcome into your session welcome into your reading if you are new here hi my name is eric it is so wonderful to meet you and if you're returning what's up guys now earth signs we've got some things to talk about honey <laughs> Okay, so this is going to be a reading for, um, this is a timeless reading. This is a timeless reading. Um, and the intention, the feeling was I wanted, to, I was being called to do more collective readings, but this time I was being called to break it up into all 12 of the signs. And so I'm doing that today for the earth signs. So Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, um, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, North Node, South Node, whatever placement that you have, that whether it's the a planet in Taurus, you have one of your main planets in Taurus, or uh, Taurus, the sign of Taurus is being aspected in your chart somehow, um, or this has something to do with your second house. Maybe your second house is being activated right now or aspected right now because um, uh, Taurus rules the second house in astrology. Uh, so this message is being channeled, uh, recorded, and published in June of 2024. Uh, but this does not have to resonate just for June. In, for some, this is feeling like your six-month check-in or just like a June message. But overall, this could resonate for you at any time, okay? Regardless as to whether you're watching this in June or later on down the road. Yes? Okay. I believe that covers that. General reading, please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. What I'm going to do here is I'm, I've channeled a little bit for you already um, through meditation. And then I'm going to get into these oracle cards. I'm going to pick one card for each sign, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. And then we're going to break that up and check the timestamps in the, uh, um, the description box and the pinned comment below for the timestamp for your specific sign. Yes, now this can resonate for anyone, for, for any placement that you have that is being aspected at this time, whether it is, it is you're watching this for your sun, moon rising and or Venus or North Node or any other planet that you have maybe in Taurus, um, or like I said, or the second house is being aspected or the sign of Taurus, wherever that falls in your chart is being aspected somehow, okay? For this message to resonate for you. Um, okay, so let's get into your general message here. So I was meditating. Uh, and, and connecting, making sure I was solidly connected to your energy. And I got in, um, I was seeing, first of all, I do want to say, I'm sorry, I'm not, I know I'm jumping around, but, but when I first connected, was like ready to go and start like actual, actually press record, immediately I felt some of you look at me like all side eye, like, yeah, where you been? <laughs> Fuck you been, bitch. Sorry guys, I needed to take some time. I, I, I had to, um, yes, actually I do wanna explain this to you because some of you may not have heard me talk about this yet, but I did have to take an extended time period away from reading because I needed to find a deeper reason to read again. Um, I couldn't keep the same old schedule in the past of, you know, okay, this is why I'm, I'm explaining this to you because it, it falls into play with part of your message and that is of practicality but let me finish this first um uh, you know the practical sense of being a business owner and being a content creator 333 and having a set schedule to produce x amount of content in x amount of time blah 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 trying to reach this goal you know very practical very uh, goal oriented plan oriented type of energy but for me being the sensitively intuitive and uh, sensitive and intuitive individual that i am um, I'm more of I'm more of a spiritual energy, spiritual mindset. I'm not so grounded and practical. I am a full fire sign. Okay, all three of my signs in constellational astrology or true sidereal astrology, all three of my main signs are fire. Okay, <laughs> so when it comes to practicality and earthly situations, I very much resonate with the on earth but not of earth energy. Right, so when it comes to applying a practical schedule like that to a to such a highly spiritual and intuitive and very flow based process to begin with there's a disconnect and i ended up over exerting myself burning myself out and getting to the point where i was losing my the meaning like doing readings was losing 444 on the counter was losing meaning to me so i had to take an extended amount of time away from it to find to refine that meaning to regain that meaning okay so 
in relation to whomever's energy was like, where the fuck you been? That's where I've been, okay? Self-care is a real thing, honey. Cheers to that. <laughs> so, with that said, getting into what I channeled for you, so... Oh God, okay, also, I'm sorry, I have a kitten. Um, by now I have learned to lock him out when I'm doing this because he goes wild. You may be hearing noises. I think he was just trying to climb the screen door. Sorry guys, so getting into your image, what dropped me into, when I knew I was in your energy, I was in a jungle, okay? And I personally, for my taste, I was seeing like a rainforest, right? Okay, excellent. Um, and I was seeing it very clearly, very, very vividly, and what was being what was what was standing out to me about the forest was its practicality its practical nature its realness its tangibility you know all of the all of the energy and the structure that goes into growing such a physical ecosphere really or organism really a forest is really an organism in my opinion um, but that's a very practical very tangible you know very real energy right that that's what was standing out about it for me and i'm like okay well yeah that makes sense that's a forest that's earth sign energy okay that makes sense but then y'all i started to see this humanoid creature i mean i want to call it a creature but it's really a, it, it looked like a human but it resembled the image of if any of you are familiar with the movie the ring it resembled that being that crawls out of the TV um, I was seeing and it, it, it's it was so it was so specific to that image that the being looked black and white okay it was devout of all color and all life okay and it was crawling on crawling through the, the ground crawling through this jungle um, and what and, and I know that's a pretty disturbing image and if you're not familiar with the movie you might want to google it you might want to wait you may not even want to google it at all you probably have enough of an image so obviously the first thing that I was feeling is this is this is a deep dark secret um, 717 on the counter and it's feeling very ancestral um, it may even be tied to East Asian countries um, you know China uh, Japan um, maybe some of the islands down there. It, it, it is, it, it's giving a dominantly Chinese feel, um, but it, that doesn't have to be it. Take it as it resonates. This is, this is a general reading. And this is the overall energy that I was picking up on for, for the earth signs, but mostly Taurus is coming through with this. Um, we'll see what all three have. But this being is giving feelings of, giving very uh, spiritual, mystical, and magical feelings with it. And the overall energy that I was getting for for the earth signs is there is a there is a spiritual side to you, a magical side to you, a supernatural side to you that is crawling out of the depths now. Um, it's getting to the point where you can no longer deny this. And for some of you, the theme of this is that you have disconnected from your fam family's lineage. So let's take the Chinese example here. And this may actually resonate with you, or if it doesn't, take it and fit it into how it may resonate for you in your life specifically. But let's say, you know, there, there, you, I, I know many of us have heard the ancient Chinese secret, you know, uh, 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 what is it, sound bites, um, and like all that, that concept of ancient Chinese wisdom and how it's very magical and very mystical, or at least it can be. There is a feeling here, and this is very, a, a very Capricorn energy too, so Capricorn is coming through with this as well, the practical side of it. So it seems that there is a disconnect within your family, your family lineage, or the family lineage of this hypothetical situation that I'm speaking of, uh, whether, res whether, whether it resonates for you or not. Um, there is a feeling of disconnecting from the mystical side of your lineage or of that lineage and becoming more practical, right? More business oriented, more, um, more down to earth, as they say, uh, not believing in ghosts, not believing in the supernatural, not believing in anything tangible, a very, uh, a, a hyper scientific oriented mind or a hyper factual mind. If I can't see it, touch it, taste it, blah, blah, if I can't perceive it with my physical senses, it doesn't exist right and for those of you that resonates with this specifically there is a fear underneath underlying this there is this um i want to say anecdotal but also superstition 
superstitious energy. It feels like somewhere in the family lineage, um, because I don't want to say that if this is resonating with you, I don't want to say it's you specifically who have made this disconnect. I would say more so that you facilitate it, you embody it at this point, but it's something that's been growing in the lineage for some time. And there was this, this, this one break in the family timeline, in the ancestral timeline, where somebody decided that the practical mindset was more appropriate. And was less given to superstition, more practical. It's the practicality of it that was chosen over the mystic, the mystical, and the unknown of the supernatural. And it's funny. I I, I wanted to wear my moon shirt today for this. This felt appropriate for the for the earth signs. And um, a song came through later on as I was starting to set up. And it's the same song that came through for the water signs. Ironically enough, the moon represents uh, Cancer. Can also represent Pisces. Um, but it's a song called uh, Far Side, The Far Side of the Moon by Tinashe. Running from my heart, hate to go so soon. This has to be the end. You won't see me again. The Far Side of the Moon. Running from my heart. It's such a wonderful song. I am a huge Tinashe fan, so if you want to check it out, check it out. But the water signs got that energy too. And it's ironic that I'm also wearing the moon. The moon can also represent cancer. Somebody here may have a cancer placement. Someone here may also have a water sign placement. Or you could be a cross watcher for a water sign in some sort of romantic situation because that's what was coming through before in the water sign energy and when i was thinking about it today i was like you know what that is so funny because i know a water sign and an earth sign that have been a, had a really tough and tumultuous relationship and i bet one of them is watching one of these readings right now <laughs> so that for me was just confirmation that okay these two can be connected now there was one other thing that i wanted to say about this lineage to the the, the lineage, the practical, the practical aspect of it, it'll come back to me most likely. But that's what I've got for the earth signs right now. So overall, there is some sort of mystical, magical energy that is resurfacing in your life. You're reconnecting to it at this time. Um, the, something about the practical nature of your reality is starting to break away. You're actually what I'm hearing is you're starting to break free from this because it has become for all intents and purposes it has become a prison a jail cell even you have been locked in this energy it has stripped you of so much of your freedom because our freedom as spiritual beings having this human experience yes we have physical human freedoms that are granted to us and should be upheld regardless as to whether they actually are or not okay but then we also have spiritual freedoms that are way more intense, way more powerful, and are actually much more intrinsically connected to the process of manifesting what you actually perceive or of or experience in the physical world. I just saw 1313 on the counter. 13 is Scorpio, the death card. Transformation, change, <clears throat> the Grim Reaper even. <laughs> okay, we'll see if death comes out for you guys, but uh, yeah, and this is really standing out for Capricorn too. It's the practicality of it. It's necessary to start breaking free from that, allowing yourself to be, and we're not, and by breaking free from that, we're not telling you that, you know, you need to be completely like head up in the clouds, no longer down and grounded to earth. No, not at all. But there needs to be, at this point in your spiritual ascension, your spiritual development, it's time for you to start building a channel between you and the higher realms now. Instead of focusing so much on your, your connection, your channel between you and the earth and being so grounded and being so practical, now that you have, because you're quite solid there, okay? And yes, for some of you, it has become a bit of a prison, but that's really only because you've outgrown it. If it's feeling like a 1414 on the counter, listen to your intuition, follow your angels, trust your angels. If you're feeling like it's become a prison at this point, it's only because you've outgrown this structure. You're starting to expand. You no longer fit in this narrow channel. And not only that, but you have another channel that you need to be opening up so that the spiritual side of you can really start to filter back in, flow back in, okay? You've really just outgrown it, earth signs. Let's go. Let's get into this for my Taurus, my uh, Virgo, and my Capricorns, Libra. 
is coming through. Some of you, I haven't done the air signs yet. The, the air signs are going to be last or next um, after the earth signs. But um, you, some of you may have a Libra placement. You may want to end. You may want to watch the Libra reading. Maybe even the air signs. Well, sorry, no, we're channeling the earth signs right now. You've got them going already. Somebody has a Libra placement. Someone is dating a Libra. This might resonate for you on a romantic level. I don't do love reading specifically. However, if they come through, when they come through, I will happily read the energies. And that does feel relevant for someone here. Potentially even a Cancer Taurus combination. One of you may be a Cancerian, the other of you may be a Tauran. Let's go. For my earth signs, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. For my earth signs, what messages do you have for the earth signs at this time, please? For my earth signs, Taurus, Virgo, and Capricorn. I'm going to pick one card for each of you, yeah? Here we go. Earth signs. For my Taurans. Five, five, five on the counter as we're doing this. Taurus, you have ungrounded. Look at that. Mm, that is so deep. I don't even... Okay, Virgo. Sweetness. Oh, that's cute. And then Capricorn. Self-care. All right. Okay, guys. So, Taurus, one more time. You've got ungrounded. Virgo. You've got sweetness. Enjoy the sweetness of life, honey. And then, yeah, okay, I see that. I hear that one loud and clear. <laughs> and then you've got self-care for Capricorn, yeah? All right, guys, check the description box and or the pinned comment down below for your, the timestamp for your sign, and we will get into it right now, skis. Yes? <laughs> hey there, Taurus. All right. Getting into your energies here, Taurus, you have ungrounded. And part of me, for some of you, this is the process as, of becoming ungrounded. For, I'm hearing a very many of you, um, unpracticalizing yourself, the, the, the unpracticality of it. Um, I, this, I know this might sound really wild, 1717 on the counter, Taurus, but some of you are being encouraged to come a little ungrounded right now just lift up a little bit now i started to shuffle the cards to just to get an energy for you and immediately the three of swords came out okay um I, I, this is the root of the situation so so there is a there is an element here taurus of being too grounded because of the pain that you feel felt and each and every time something hurt you you dug yourself deeper and deeper and deeper into the earth you solidified yourself even more you have built an incredible foundation for yourself emotional emotionally mentally physically one of the above all of the above some of the above take it as it resonates but it's this you need to learn to grow upward now taurus okay and it this might sound okay okay yeah the next card that's coming out for you taurus is strength um oh shoot i should have left that it's okay. We'll do it again. Um, so, and it's interesting because I believe Leo got that energy. Um, there's something about taming the beast within. So Taurus, there is an extreme defense mechanism that you have put into place for lack of a better term. We have the moon now. The moon, Taurus. Something is not as it seems. This pain that you're feeling is not as it seems. You have been practically minded for so long that you have forgotten how to move with creative flow. And I understand that pain hurts, but, but you, don't have to, you don't have to dig yourself so deep into the earth or so deep into a shell or so deep into a cave or like you don't have to, you don't have to put on such a hard defense anymore because of these energies. You're, it, it, this might sound weird, but instead of growing into yourself further with this pain, allow it to break you free more. Allow it to um, allow yourself to grow up and out of it instead of growing down and in. Okay. All right, Taurus. The, the moon was saying, oh, okay, so strength was, was talking about um, calming the beast within. The lion on that card would represent your, your animalistic nature, your defense mechanism, your instinctual defense mechanism, okay? 
uh, the woman on that, which is the Empress, who the Empress does, in her a card officially does represent Taurus or can, uh, can represent Taurus. She's the one that's like taming that beast. So instead of, instead of going beast mode, uh, tame that beast and then channel that energy into spiritual awareness spiritual growth which is what we mean by growing up and out instead of down and in okay two more shuffles here for you taurus show me taurus please for this ungrounded energy get a un get a little ungrounded like we it's almost like spirit is daring you 2020 on the counter something may have kicked off or started off this realization may have started to play out for you in 2020 and now whenever you're watching this reading later on you're starting to get the 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 conscious breakthrough you're starting to see the cycles you're starting to understand and see the patterns you're starting to break this code and this code is asking you is daring you spirit is daring you to get a little ungrounded you do have the nine of swords at the bottom of the deck that makes perfect sense there's that fear and then subsequently the practicality that comes in to quell this fear. I don't want to get ungrounded. I don't want to be floating off the ground. I like being on the ground. Okay. But you're more than just a grounded being. You're more than just a physical being. You are a spiritual. You are a mental. You are an energetic. You are a magical being. You don't have to be afraid to fly. And I saw something recently that was like wild and it made so much sense to me. But it's like it said... People are not afraid of flying. They're afraid of the fall. People are not afraid of love. They're afraid of a broken heart. That slaps a little, doesn't it? Yeah. Show me Taurus, please. What message do you have for Taurus at this time, please? Oh! <laughs> the sun? Yes, please, Taurus. Look, look, there's the opposite to the moon, the sun. Okay, so these, this pain, okay, that Three of Swords energy that came out for you originally, it's not what it seems, Taurus, the moon, okay? It's kind of illusionary. I mean, yes, it's painful. Yes, it's your deep, dark secrets. It's your triggers. It's, you know, your fears and all that. I understand that, but 222 on the counter, but instead of looking at it from a dark and doomsday and death-oriented, even fearful-oriented point of view, look at it as a light, enlightening. An enlightening moment. It's illuminating something for me, for you, that ultimately will take the fear away from you once it is illuminated. Once you understand the fear. Excuse me. Because whatever the fear is, it is limiting you. And the more that you double down into. Uh, defending yourself against all of this we'll say the more you're grounding yourself the more you're cutting yourself off from i'm hearing literally spiritual laws and abilities that you could tap into in order to erase this fear effectively to to take this pain and use it as a lesson in growth and expansion instead of a lesson in growth in just physical defenses you know what i mean that's what the sun represents here, the illumination of it all. Okay, show me Taurus, please. The hanged man. Practicality, again. Um, Self-limiting beliefs. So someone is either having or about to have a breakthrough in terms of how the practicality has been, has been limiting them. Because if you weren't taking such a practical approach to it, you would then be able to tap into the creative potential of spirit to, 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 help you, to help you through your circumstances. But because you're so practically mindset and practically oriented, Taurus, it effectively cuts you off from that magic. And the hanged man now is representing that moment that you're either in or are about to be in where you are in that practical energy of being hung like this man is and effectively being limited right but you see the illumination around his head that's enlightenment that's him starting to get it that's him starting to say oh my goodness i have effectively hung myself here i can't deal with life or circumstances or the fears or whatever life hands or brings to me in an ideal manner in this way i can't do it as effectively hung or strung up like this because I'm cutting myself off from the other parts of my power. 
That's what this illumination represents for you. That's what being in this hanged man energy, this stationary energy, this limited position represents for you. With that, we have the Four of Wands. I do want to pull one more card because that one... Okay, there we go. Ah, and Justice. This is good, Taurus. Two of Wands, though. You have to make a decision, Taurus. Are you... And, and it's interesting that this is showing itself as the Two of Wands because the Wands represent fire and fire represents spirit. Okay, it's not the two of pentacles where you're practically you're, you were in the two of pentacles before because you were from a, you were weighing things from a very practical mindset. Okay, but now it's start, time to start looking, looking at things from a spiritual point of view. And from that point of view, right? So fire, wands, spirit, from a spiritual point of view, from the spiritual perspective, which is the better option to choose? The overly practical or the balance between practicality and a magical mindset? Justice will come into your life because you have the foundation, Taurus, to do this. You have, there are the wands again, the four of wands now. It's not the four of pentacles, which would be, again, pentacles is earth, pentacle is practical. You are an earth sign, okay? It's not the four of pentacles where you're holding on to things for dear life, for a practical mindset. Why? Well, because you could lose it. Somebody could come steal it. Uh, I'm a hoarder. Uh, so, whatever. Okay? You don't have to be a hoarder, but okay. But from a spiritual mindset, abundance flows. Four of wands. Wands, again, is fire, is spirit. Spirit is constantly flowing. That will never stop. There is spirit. Spiritual energy is in such abundance. It is 100% completely unfathomable from a three-dimensional mindset, from a three-dimensional mind. I mean, it's not until you're completely back with source that you can even perceive of the vast well that is spiritual energy, that is spirit. Okay, fine. Constantly, ever flowing, four of wands. You are good. You are solid. You have got the practical down. Now you can apply that with spiritual as well. Th and I just heard, think of the abundance that's going to come through with that. But it's really, it's not even about the abund abundance, really. It's about bringing justice to your life, balancing the scales of karma for you, even. But you've got to let this. Some of this practicality go, you gotta let more of this spiritual side of things to enter into the situation. Okay, Taurus? Cool. I am gonna leave it there. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. Uh, please, if this reading helped you, if you got some good insight from it, go ahead and tap that uh, like button for me. Even consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. Yes? With that, I hope you have a fantastic day and a fantastic month. I love you all so very much. And I look forward to connecting with you again for our next reading very, very soon. Yes! Excellent. Mwah! Bye. <laughs> well, hello, Virgo. How are you, dear? It is so nice to see you. Very nice to connect with you again. So, Virgo, you are being asked to learn to, or to start, excuse me, to start enjoying the sweetness of life. Because you, my friend, have been working very, very hard. Overworking, a little too hard sometimes. Uh, part of what's going on for you, are you, you are starting to question why you have been working so hard because the results that you're receiving from this are not, specifically, are not benefiting you. They're benefiting others. and. For a majority of you, I feel like the work that you've been doing hasn't necessarily been to be the be to be for your benefit or betterment. It's been you've been working towards others. I'm getting a very much a nurse type of energy. Uh, whether you are a nurse, a registered nurse, um, a doctor, a uh, a physician's assistant, uh, I was. But the overall energy I was getting is a nurse, uh, a caregiver type of energy. So place that in your life as it fits. Now, in terms of you being a nurse of, or, or representing that archetype for this reading, it's for other people's care. I mean, it's for your betterment, it's for your fulfillment, you get paid for it, hopefully you get paid well. Um, but see, part of that, that's part of the issue too. 
Some of you are getting upset because you are not being paid properly. You are being undervalued and overworked. And that's starting to get you to question whether or not this is really for your own good, for your own well-being. Now, some of you are facing the reality of wanting to leave the commitment altogether, but that's really because you're stressed out. Okay, and that's uh, and, and you're uh, now whether you choose to leave this dynamic or not. Uh, before you make that decision, you are being asked to get back to nature. You're being called toward nature. You are being asked to enjoy the sweetness in life. And if you can't enjoy the sweetness in life, you're being asked to find it. Because in you following the sweetness in life, your form, whatever you deem to be the sweetness of life, by you following that, you're following your joy, your pleasure. And that's ultimately going to lead you to the choice that you need to make, the response that needs to be given to this question you seem to be bouncing around in your head. Okay, Virgo? Uh, now, that doesn't have to be you. Um, if that doesn't necessarily specifically resonate for your life, Virgo, place it in your life as it fits, okay? But there is, I do want to say overall, there's a decision that needs to be made. And before you even begin to start making that decision, you need to find the sweetness in life. You need to take a break, all right? You need to find a way to take a break. You need to find a way to enjoy yourself again. You need to find hobbies, something. And I'm not saying that you're about to quit your, 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 your gig and like go off into the forest and be some sort of artist. I mean, if that's the case, then go ahead, Virgo, do it if that's what's right for you. But it doesn't necessarily have to be that, you know, but, but, but this is being suggested to you, to you, Virgo, because I just wanted to say Taurus. So you might have a Taurus placement. It's being suggest just suggested to you, Virgo, because that's what's going to help you have a clear mind to make the decision from the most practical point of view that you can instead of just making a fly by the seat fly by your the seat of your pants decision to leave a lifelong career that ultimately will now leave you in a in a bigger mess than you needed to be in right virgo okay last shuffle here for my virgo show me virgo please what messages do we have for virgo at this time yes virgo what, what what's going on show me virgo please my lovely beautiful virgos Okay, well, here you are, the Nine of Pentacles. This does represent Virgo energy. It's also the pre-Empress card. Now, as it came out, it was falling in reverse. It didn't go completely in reverse, but it did kind of try. Um, and, okay, what I'm hearing is this is you kind of turning on yourself a little bit, starting to feel the loss of your autonomy a little bit, starting to question your independence a little bit. Starting, even there's a practical uh, question here, Virgo, of do I really need all of this? Some of you are reanalyzing your lives, your um, cost of living expenses, I'm hearing, uh, your lifestyle. Now, for many of you, that's the practicality of it. This is just too damn expensive. But in it being too damn expensive, or you starting to realize that it's too damn expensive, you're also starting to say to yourself, well, actually, do I really need this stuff? And that's coming down to your career too. Because many of you feel abundant. You know, for some of you out here, you know that you have many other talents that you could tap into, okay? You're not bound to this one profession. You're not bound to this one situation, this one type of situation. And yes, this is very heavily work oriented. It could be life path, a soul mission orientation. So for you, Virgo, this energy that's creeping up on you for in the jungle, it, it's your sense of fulfillment within that's starting to creep up on you. It's this side of yourself that is heavily unfulfilled and is now starting to find an avenue, a channel back into your consciousness so that you can re-aliven this part of yourself again. Show me Virgo, please. The Ace of Pentacles. Okay, look, we're progressing here. You started with the nine, now you have the Ace. The all you need is that one last pentacle, Virgo, to reach the 10, which is the pinnacle. The ultimate, the ultimate career, family, physical life, um, riches, abundance. This is also the 10 of Pentacles, I feel is representative of the 10th house, which is your career. It's also your social standing. 
how how your how society the people around you perceive of you from a very practical point of view you know the view of in good in good standing socially has a good job a nice house blah 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 but also in that virgo you're questioning these things you're questioning that american dream will say for some of you or the pursuit of something like that you're questioning it and for a lot of you it's because it's it's, it's so expensive to do that these days it's nearly impossible right from some points of view but see that's just the thing well i could just change my point of view and get back into it but do you really want to do that does it have the same value to you anymore virgo does it mean the same thing does people's does your society your your your, your standing in society your social status the way that people perceive of you does that really hit the same way anymore do you even really fucking care anymore <laughs> would you rather be happy would you rather reach that ten of pentacles that pinnacle doing things that everyone expects of you or what society expects of you or, or what's practical or what's well known what's already done or do you want to do it in a unique way do you want to reach that ten of pentacles having done it your own way virgo what your heart, your soul, your creative side is calling for. This may even be an inner child energy, 555, five, five, that's creeping up on you. The Queen of Swords. Let me be honest with you, this can be a very Virgo energy, this Queen of Swords, from a practical standpoint. And it, and, it, and, it, and it feels that way because the Queen of Swords, I say the Queen of Swords and the Queen of Pentacles are kind of besties. They're very similar, but for different reasons. The Queen of Pentacles will accept a little more deliberation or discussion in terms of making a decision than the Queen of Swords will. The Queen of Swords is straight facts. She's not into argument, she's not into debate, it is what it is, and we're sticking to it, okay? And I feel like, and so this resonates with Virgo because Virgo, you are very much an energy of cleaning up or optimizing something, um, taking something that is not running in an efficient manner and making the proper judgments and um, adjustments to make it run efficiently or more efficiently, right? And when it comes to that sort of energy, there is no debate. It's either, it's either getting us to that level of, of efficiency or it isn't. And if it's not, cut it the fuck out. We don't even need to have a discussion about it. Just cut it out and change it. But this card was thrown on the floor for you, Virgo. So there is a, so there is a part of this Queen of Swords energy that you are either in the process of getting rid of or you need to get rid of it. Ooh. The Hierophant at the bottom of the deck representative of Taurus energy, of another very practical energy, but also the system. Indoctrination, institutions, institutionalized energies, that same old humdrum, that, that already beaten path type of energy. The structure, the environment. Wow, Virgo. I'm hearing, I mean, that's your message right there. So overall, what I'm getting here, Virgo, is you're questioning this, the Hierophant, the institutionalized energy, the same old, the societal structure, okay? So this also could represent for Capricorn. You may have a Capricorn placement. Um, you may be dealing with a Capricorn. Um, but also... This is giving Capricorn energy because there is a 10th house uh, highlight for you, Virgo. So, and Capricorn rules the 10th house. So, maybe check where Capricorn is in your chart as well, because that could have something to do with it. But really, dominantly, for most of you, this is a 10th house type of situation or mindset or energy so check to see how the 10th house is being aspected for you right now and if you really want to dive deeper into it look to see 
if the 10th house is being activate, uh, uh, activated or aspected, if it is, look at what sign is in the 10th house for you. You may be an Aries rising and it might be Capricorn, but um, if it's not Capricorn, look at what sign, take into account what sign is in the 10th house for you if your 10th house is being activated in this time, at this time. And maybe if you're just curious, just look at what's going on with your 10th house. But that's the feeling that this is giving. This is, this is career, this is society, societal standard, societal viewpoint, how you are perceived in society, your image, okay? The 10th house is something that like a celebrity would really wanna pay attention to, right? Celebrity status or that type of energy, okay? But in order to make this decision, in order to answer this question, Virgo, you need to follow the sweetness in life. However that resonates for you, whatever that, whatever that means for you, whatever you find to be the sweetness of life, you need to fo follow it. And it may turn out to be the answer. Maybe you will get creative and start to go on a creative avenue in that sense. Or maybe that will just, at, for all of you, whether you decide to be creative, take that further and go creative sty uh, style with it, Following that sweetness is going to help you connect with the core of yourself, 444 on the counter, to help you make this decision, to help lead you in the right direction, okay? Yeah, there's your message. There you go, Virgo. I hope this was helpful for you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, if you did get value out of this, uh, the, out of this message, out of this reading, please, I encourage you to tap that like button for me. You can leave me a comment too. Let me know in the comment, uh, comments down below. And if you haven't done so already and you've, you're considering it, Go ahead and subscribe, honey. Yeah. All right. I love you guys. I hope you have a fantastic day and I look and a fantastic month. And I look forward to connecting with you again for our next reading very, very soon. Yes. Cool. Mwah! Bye. <laughs> well, hello there, Capricorn. All right, babe. Let's get into this. Um, and you know, it's so crazy. So Capricorn, you have self-care here. And I know you probably see this tower card, but let me explain uh self-care is here and honestly the message was coming through but it felt so cliche when it comes to capricorn energy that i was like that can't possibly be i mean it's got to be something deeper than that you know i was i was automatically like dismissing it because i was just like oh yeah we say this to capricorn or i feel like we say this to capricorn all the time but capricorn you're working too hard And it feels like you're working so hard to distract yourself from something. It's the spiritual side of you creeping up on you now. For some reason, and that reason really is just as simple as it's time. You're ready for it. You've grown enough. You've seen enough in this physical world and under, two, 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 two under, uh, on the counter. And you have enough of a physical understanding to start breaking into the less practical aspects of your existence. Now. Again, I don't want you to freak out, but yes, you do have the tower here. And this is a warning, unfortunately. Um, well, it's also kind of an omen. It's not something that you can escape. Really, the only thing that you can do is mitigate the damage by starting to go with a little more with the flow. Now, for some of you, this is kind of like a, ooh, no, no, mayday, mayday type of energy because you have been pushing this off for so long that the only way for this, start, for this process to get started is through some sort of cataclysmic event in your life. Hate to break it to you. Please don't shoot the messenger, but that's some of the message for you. For some of you, because you've been dragging your feet for, for too long. And at this point, I mean, it could have been easier if you had let go and gone with the flow. <laughs> I just heard back in the day, but it's a little too late for that at this point. And this is gonna happen whether you, your ego likes it or not, <clears throat> because it's part of your life here at this time which is why you're receiving this message at this time. Um, it's gotta happen and it's gonna happen <laughs> regardless as to whether you like it or not. So really the only thing that you can do is mitigate the damage by starting more of a self-care regimen. You gotta let go of these distractions that are keeping you blinded from the truth. Now for others of you, it's not that dire, but either way, it's a tower moment, it's a shocking moment. It's, it's a singular moment in time that changes everything some of you are a little more prepared for it than others but it's still going to be a pretty cataclysmic event and 
let's just go ahead and say not just for you but also for others around you okay Ooh. all right capricorn let's get into this and it's gonna be pretty cataclysmic because your mindset is gonna be changing your practical nature is being rearranged right now is going to be 444 on the counter with a zero which means the infinite so you're protected through this but something new is coming through 444 with that zero the zero for me is representing an egg a possibility a birth of new birth and it's going to change your mindset it's going to change your it's going to change who you are especially in relation to these people so yeah it's going to be pretty cataclysmic let's give this one last shuffle ah see yeah the three of cups Ooh, i'm getting even i'm getting sisterhood from this brotherhood People that you once really identified with, really connected with, your vibe, your click, whatnot, whatever, that's going to be changing. For the better. I'm also hearing for the betterment of society, and that also has to do with letting go of certain low vibrational and toxic energies that we engage in on a social communal level. So while it will be cataclysmic for them because you will be removing yourself from the situation or spirit will just naturally be removing you from it they won't have your participation as part of their five 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 on the counter now four with a four four five 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 on the counter the, your participation is going to be removed so that's going to remove some of their solidity some of their fan base i'm hearing it's also going to be cataclysmic for you because it's going to, you're going to be stepping into a brand new environment, but it's going to be for the betterment of society and of yourself and even of those other people because you will no longer be involved. You will no longer be putting your energy into it. Therefore, it will not be able to sustain itself in the same way. And the more and more people start to do this, start to separate, start to step out of these clicks and these circles and these cycles, the more and more diminished this energy becomes and eventually it will be just removed altogether and we will be in a much better place societally wise. But there is still that process of getting there, which is the tower moment. Okay, last shuffle for you, Capricorn. All right, here we go. Three of, three of Cups is still at the bottom of the deck. Show me Capricorn, please. The sun! Ver no, Taurus got the sun too. <laughs> yeah, look, and it's the opposite of the moon. There we go, I'm liking it. The sun. Um, okay, solar flares may be really potentially affecting you at this time. What is, uh, because some of you are asking, like, what is driving this? Like, uh, this is not me. This is not something I would naturally think of. This is not something I would naturally be gravitating towards or drawn to. Why is this happening? Where is this change coming from? Influx of solar energy that is raising the vibration of the planet. There you go, right there. And if you really want to get scientific with it, start researching solar flares and the solar cycles. Uh, right now, as of June 2024, we are in solar maximum. And so we've been getting bombarded with a shit ton of solar energy lately. 444 with a 7 on the counter. You're protected through this, but it's spiritual awakening, guys. It's happening. All right. Show me Capricorn, please. The sun is also a really good thing, though, too. The sun represents illumination. Everything's going to be okay. It's the most optimistic and best card in the deck, all right? But then you do have that with the Three of Swords. So this is very similar to Taurus's energy. So you might have a Taurus placement. Taurus may be, the, the sign of Taurus may be um, being aspected or affected in your chart right now, or maybe your second house because the second house does rule Taurus, uh, I'm sorry, Taurus does rule the second house, even if there is, uh, for you personally, de depending on your rising sign, if you're an Aries rising, then Taurus does officially rule the second house for you. But traditionally, Taurus rules the second house. Um, it's the pain, illuminating the pain, very similar to the Taurus reading. You might wanna go watch the Taurus reading seeing the light through the pain, through the struggle, illumination, coming out of a very hurt place and being illuminated, seeing the bright side of things, starting to see the lesson in everything, starting to see how you can start to lighten up a bit. Pain has caused you, very similar to Taurus, pain has caused you to dig deeper into practicality. 
and it's become a prison because you have outgrown that. You are outgrowing that. Show me Capricorn, please. Woo! Okay. The Queen of Wands. All right. This is giving energies of what do you want to do, Capricorn? Oh, boy. Okay, so now some of you are getting into, are using this practical mindset of yours to question what it is you are attracting to yourself. You're starting to understand or become curious of the concepts of the law of attraction or maybe just how we manifest our realities. You're starting to become open to the idea or to the, to the truth that we, that we manifest our realities through our minds, through our belief systems, through our energy, our thought patterns. You're starting to question that. You're starting to get curious about it and you're starting to say to yourself, what am I actually attracting in my life? What am I actually drawing into? Like, what am I manifesting? Because the Queen of Wands is all about magnetism. It's about using her powers of magnetism to, grab, to, to magnetize or draw her desires towards her. Okay? So whether you're a man or a woman, it doesn't matter. We all have feminine and masculine energies. We all have the ability to attract. And the question now is, Capricorn, what are you attracting? And you're seeing questionable elements in your life through certain partnerships, team members, friend groups, social settings, maybe even familial stuff. But you're starting to say to yourself, well, wait a second. If I, if I create my reality, if I manifest things, what is going on within me that has these types of energies or these types of circumstances, these types of relationships these types of happenings, whatnot, whatever, what is going on within me that's bringing that into my life? And some of you are definitely seeing that in friends groups and social settings because you're starting to recognize that the people that you have surrounding you are not ideal anymore for whatever given reason. And then we have strength at the bottom of the deck. So we have strong Leo energy here. You may have a Leo placement. You might want to check the Leo reading. Because between the sun and strength, they both represent Leo. Now, the Queen of Wands would represent Aries. Yes, the Queen of Wands would represent Aries, 555 five, five on the counter. Could also represent Sagittarius or Leo. But okay, so there's strong fire energy here, but that makes sense. That's in line, in line with the larger message that I had for the earth signs in terms of a, a level of spirituality coming back into your life, magical nature, all that kind of stuff. So that's where the fire relevance makes sense because fire is spirit. But also you may have a fire placement. So yeah, Capricorn, that's what's going on for you. Oh, damn. Okay, look. And then, so, okay, you have the strength card here. Then under that, you have the Ace of Wands. More fire. And then the Nine of Cups. And then the Hierophant, which Virgo got as well. You may have a Virgo placement as well. You may, okay, also, this might be a bit of a 10th house energy for you. Very strong 10th house energies for Virgo. If that resonates for you, maybe watch the Virgo reading. Maybe you have Virgo in the 10th house. I don't know what, I don't, I can't think of off the top of my head what rising sign that would be, but. Uh, hold on. Well, I can't, I, that's, I don't want to, I don't want to interrupt the flow. Um, you might have Virgo in your 10th house. Your 10th house might be, you may be an Aries rising and have Capricorn in your 10th house, or maybe your 10th house is being activated. It doesn't have to be. That's kind of coming through here with this Virgo connection. Maybe check the Virgo reading. Especially if your 10th house is being activated because I feel like that will still resonate with you whether you have Virgo or Capricorn in there, in there or something else. It doesn't matter. Um, that might be relevant for you. Strength though, right? You're, going, you're also going through an energy of similar to Taurus too of taming the beast within that may have just been defense mechanisms because of the pain that you've experienced and not wanting to be, not wanting to get your heart broken again, however that resonates for you, whether it's romantic or not. Taming that beast, connecting with your desire within and your happiness, your dreams, your wishes, your goals. Nine of cups, ace of wands, strength. 
but everything's going to be okay, Capricorn. Even though you did get that tower energy in the beginning, you still ultimately have the sun in your spread officially. That's good. All right. No matter what's going to be changing here, it's for the better. I keep hearing for the betterment of society. But even if it is just for the betterment of betterment of the society of society, remember you are still part of society. So if it's good, it's kind of if it's for the betterment of society, then it's also for your betterment too. Okay, take that into account. This is very strong tenth house energies. I mean, Capricorn, you technically and officially rule the tenth house. So you're very your mind. You're very much intrinsically. Your mind is oriented toward business career finances, you know, wealth, status in society, how society, society perceive of you oh, for better or for worse, whether you want to be like a celebrity, someone who is really highly regarded in society, or you're on the exact opposite of that, whether you want to be or not. <laughs> whether you want to be or not, yeah. But self-care is your key. Very similar to, to Virgo's energy. Self-care is the key here. Okay. Doing what, and, and it's specifically for you, Capricorn, you need to be caring for yourself more. Maybe stop depleting yourself so much. Um, not uh, be uh, coming out of that workaholic energy. Maybe not using work as so much of a distraction anymore from what it is you're actually feeling, what's actually coming up. 55, 55 on the counter. Ooh. Capricorn yeah you got to deal with them feelings honey you got to get I know we say get out of your feels but no you need to be getting into your feels right now Capricorn and I know that's scary but that's what self-care is saying here for you okay all right Capricorn there you have it thank you so much for tuning in I hope this was helpful for you thank you so much for being here thank you for allowing me to deliver this message to you if you got value out of this please consider tapping that like button for me and if you haven't done so already consider subscribing yeah I love you all so very much I hope you have a fantastic day and a fantastic month and I look forward to connecting with you again for our next reading very very soon yes excellent bye <laughs> bye